Welcome to the Creative Pen Podcast. I'm Joanna Penn, thriller author and creative entrepreneur, bringing you interviews, inspiration and information on writing, publishing options and marketing ideas for your book. You can find the episode show notes, your free author blueprint and lots more information at thecreativepen.com and that's pen with a double N. And here's the show. Hello creatives, I'm Joanna Penn and this is episode number 594 of the podcast and it is Monday the 27th of December 2021 as I record this from Auckland in New Zealand back in a heat wave <laughs> and I am in the cupboard again. <laughs> so I hope you had a happy Christmas and happy holidays and now I guess everyone's in that sort of between the Christmas and New Year period so I hope you're getting some time to relax. So in today's show, I'm sharing my roundup for the year, the good, the bad and the ugly. Well, in fact, the bad first. <laughs> so here we go. Not quite the year we hoped for. Review of my 2021 creative business goals. So as we all look back at the past year, it feels like it's flown by, but also that time has warped in a way, and it feels like we've been stuck in this pandemic for much longer than we expected. Ever the optimist, I wrote on 1st of January 2021, I'm expecting it to be at least a full pandemic year from March 2020 to March 2021, but I am really hoping to be back in the world in the second half of the year. <laughs> which is hilarious that I thought that. I also intended 2021 to be a year of expansion, creatively in terms of what I write, mentally in terms of things I think about, and physically in terms of my health <laughs> and where I travel. So this year did not turn out as we all hoped, did it? I think we all hoped that it would be over. Of course, it, it's not. <laughs> as I record this, it's certainly not. <laughs> uh, the UK is in the Omicron. Everyone's getting the Omicron. Fun times. So part of me doesn't want to even do this roundup because I don't want to relive a lot of this year. <laughs> But I have always found it incredibly useful to be accountable to you as my audience. And by looking back, we can be thankful to have made it through. And if you're reading or listening uh, to this, you have made it through. <laughs> you are still alive. And hopefully by reflecting, we can get some perspective on what might be possible in the year ahead. That's what I'm telling myself anyway. So here's my 2021 year in review and an update on whether I managed to meet my goals. I hope this helps with your annual review and feel free to share your achievements and lessons learned or commiserations <laughs> in the comments so uh, we can share that together. So I will talk about some of the creative goals I achieved and missed, but I want to start with something far more important. If you're utterly exhausted and struggling with physical and or mental health issues, you're not alone. So I've talked about my various issues on the podcast over the year, but essentially it's really been one of my worst years ever in terms of mental and physical health. I share these things not for sympathy, but in the hope that it helps you if you have felt or are still feeling the same way. Because we are certainly not alone. It is incredibly common. Uh, I've had lots of people, like as soon as I start sharing that I've things I've had this year, people... A lot of people share that it's the first time they've felt these things as well. So, yeah, I wanted to talk about it. So the UK winter lockdown last winter, so January to mid-March 2021, was brutal. Like It was so, so hard. I've always had some form of SAD, SAD, seasonal affective disorder, but that was compounded by sleep issues resulting from a combination of age-related hormonal changes and pandemic anxiety. So sleep issues have been reported across the world during the pandemic and in the notes I quote some sources, but that doesn't make it any easier for those of us who are experiencing the lack of sleep. And look, to be honest, it hasn't resolved. I, I, I have barely had, I mean, realistically, I haven't had a good night's sleep in a long time and I, I know that a lot of you feel the same way. 
But my anxiety around not sleeping has definitely reduced. And in fact, I have a sleep psychologist on the show, the first show in January coming up soon. So next week as I record this, and I have a feeling many of you are struggling with this too. And it's so weird because sleep used to be a superpower of mine and it's not anymore. (laughs) I would really love to get back to that. (laughs) So another common pandemic issue is feeling constantly tired, on the edge of fatigue, almost burned out from bad news, uncertainty, anxiety, everything. I mean, really. And I didn't have this in 2020. And I I feel like uh, this year has been pretty bad. So last year in 2020, the fear was real, like we were afraid. So we were like, oh my goodness, what's going on? But I feel like I was able to rally my energy. And I went really hard. I almost had a sort of manic Uh, work phase, uh, making sure my business would survive. So in 2020, I wrote a lot of books. I did a lot of marketing. I worked super hard and I had a really good year financially. But all of that probably contributed to, to being even more tired in 2021. That kind of frenetic energy is unsustainable. And as the pandemic has has grinds on, it, it grinds all of us down. And we hear a bit of good news and there's this flurry of hope and then it sinks away and the next wave hits and we can't help but doom scroll looking for just a tiny bit of news that might change things. And look, to be honest, I still do that. I'm like, oh, look, the stats on Omicron look like it might not be as bad as all that or whatever. And then the next moment you read something else and yeah, doom scrolling hasn't helped. I just can't seem to stop the addiction. (laughs) Don't know about you. I keep, I actually took Twitter off my phone, but it is back on. So sorry about that. I, I, you know, I know what I should be doing. I'm sure you feel the same. (laughs) So, yeah, so that was going on. Tiredness, not sleeping, everything. And then, yes, I got Delta in mid-July 2021, along with a ton of other people in the UK. We had the Plague Island for the summer, and I think we're back as Plague Island now. But yes, uh, I was double vaxxed. Please, no politics or anything around vaccination. I happily double vaxxed. And of course, we now know that the vaccines are excellent at preventing serious illness and death, but don't necessarily stop you getting or transmitting the virus. So I didn't experience any breathing issues. I didn't need hospitalisation. So I am very grateful for the vaccine, but it was still a very difficult few weeks of sickness, the sickest I've ever been, to be honest, uh, followed by around two and a half months of recovery, which is defined as a mild case of COVID. Uh, Up to three months of recovery is completely normal. So I still don't have my sense of smell back entirely. Perhaps that is gone forever. I mean, who knows? (laughs) Sickness does impact life, obviously. I definitely have more difficulty catching the top of my breath. Uh, there's a hill here that we climb every day and uh, I am super slow on it. Um, hills that used to be easy are not anymore. But given that my cousin was in a coma on a ventilator in the first wave of COVID, I am very grateful for the vaccine again. What was also weird, and I know many of you have also had COVID, but the physical symptoms also came with a surprising amount of mental health issues. And I don't think this is talked about enough. Um, people talk about the physical issues, but there's also the uh, some mental issues. I, I was crying a lot. I mean, like weeping a lot, um, depression, anxiety, fear of ever getting better, inability to concentrate, inability to work, obviously, all of those things. And I'm not sure that the emotional side of it has receded or that it's all just bound up in the whole pandemic fun. <laughs> While I was sick, I listened to a lot of audiobooks and appreciate audio more than ever. I also read Christine Catherine Rush's book, Writing with Chronic Illness, because I really thought I would never get better. There was a time there I just thought this is never going to stop. And I realised that a lot of people do have chronic illness. And so if you don't know about Chris's book, Writing with Chronic Illness, it's really super useful if you feel like you're, you do, you're not at your capacity. Uh, I did walk the St Cuthbert's Way in October 2021. And uh, to prove to myself I was physically better, I had to cancel a lot of stuff. I've basically given up on my ultra marathons because that's, it's. I just don't think it's sustainable now. I'm looking at the longer walks, slower day pace, but longer walks over multi-day. Uh, so doing that walk really helped me physically and mentally to feel like, do you know what? I am strong. I can do this. But in terms of health, COVID also broke my intermittent fasting regime, which was going super well. 
I was, I got really, you know, pretty healthy and lean and everything. And well, not lean, but you know, I had, I had managed things. And then when COVID hit, I, because when you lose your taste and smell, you know, you can only taste texture. I know it's not a taste, but your mouth feel. Um, I could so and and salt. So I could. I basically lived on sourdough toast because it was crunchy, and um, butter and bovril for several weeks and <laughs> then my energy was so low and I used food for emotional support and all this stuff so basically the whole diet thing went out the window and then in late November uh, pretty much soon after I got back for them from the Cuthbert's way we then had the pretty significant stress of international travel to New Zealand where I am now uh, when we're visiting my mother-in-law who has advanced cancer so uh, I'm writing and recording this from Auckland in New Zealand. Now, New Zealand has mostly kept COVID out. So you'd think it would be some uh, sort of happy paradise. But the fear here is just as bad as everywhere else in the world, perhaps even more, because they don't really have it yet. I mean, there are some cases, but it's it's nothing like anywhere else, really. But um, New Zealand has one of the strictest border control, quarantine and isolation isolation regimes in the world. <laughs> I mean, really, it is incredible and incredible good or incredible bad, depending on your <laughs> perspective. But it took months to get a slot in MIQ, which is the managed quarantine. And then it was a um, pretty much a, a nightmare, some kind of dystopian nightmare of repeated testing, which is a lot more violent than the tests in the UK. I mean, really... <laughs> their tests here are kind of yeah interesting then constant mask wearing obviously paperwork vaccine passports and what I struggled with far more than I expected was seven days of quarantine in a room with no opening window for 23 and a half hours a day inside that room with only 30 minutes walking slowly clockwise around a car park guarded by the military tested by people in hazmat gear and generally treated like a virus vector rather than a human. And all of that has, again, I really, I thought I would be okay with it. But I think along with everything else, it just, it affected me far more than I expected. It was very, very, it was very hard. And anyone who says, oh, well, it was only seven days. It's, it's very weird how difficult it was. So even when we made it out, it then took several weeks of chasing bureaucracy to get a vaccine passport <laughs> because we were vaxxed in the UK, which kind of made us second class citizens for a while. And all of this to say I am seriously out of love with travel, which is something I didn't think I would ever say and kind of adds to the depression <laughs> because travel is very, very difficult. And I kind of think I'm just going to barricade myself at home until things are, are different. Um until there's some kind of international way of dealing with this, it's it's difficult to travel. More on that to come. But in the positive side, I feel like I've learned a lot about acceptance in terms of a limited physical and mental capacity. I've, I've always, I guess, taken for granted my physical and mental health and the ability to just get stuff done. And my upbringing <laughs> was very much Norman Vincent Peale, power of positive thinking, Protestant work ethic. It doesn't matter if you're sick, you carry on working. Sickness was almost a sort of moral weakness. Um, take some vitamin C tablets and soldier on. <laughs> I mean, really, that was my upbringing. And it, but that's been impossible. And I kind of came up against physical reality, which was interesting. And I raged against it. Boy, I raged against it. But you can't, you can't rage. Uh, and I know many of you understand this. And I just had to let it be. I had to let my body do what it did. And it feels very strange being kind of out of control of what you would love things to be in your head and then what your body is capable of. So yeah, a lot of going back to bed. <laughs> was the answer. Memento mori indeed. Remember, we will die. And I think I kept coming back to that. Uh, I'm still alive. You're still alive because you're listening to this. And I know we've lost a lot of people in many different ways. But yeah, so all of this to say, this has been one of the most difficult years of my life. And I know that my life is not as challenging as many others. I like for all of all of you who are dealing with this, as well as homeschooling, as well as elderly parents, as well as other sickness, as well as everything, job loss, money issues. You know, I, I just don't know how everyone's carrying on half the time. 
So if you feel any of this, then you are not alone. And I wanted to mention this right up front because I didn't achieve all the things I wanted to achieve. But let's face it, who did? (laughs) I mean, really, who did? If you did, you are some kind of superhuman, amazing person. (laughs) Congratulations on if you were still alive. Seriously, congratulations. (laughs) But despite all of this, I did manage to do a few things. So I will cover that next. Joanna Penn, Books for Authors. So one of my goals was to write How to Make a Living with Your Writing, the third edition, which I did in the first quarter and narrated the audiobook. And I really needed to do that, the updates on that book because things have changed so much. And I can see that I'll probably need to do a fourth edition in, I don't know, three years time, probably when a lot of the blockchain stuff goes main, mainstream. But for now, uh, I'm really happy with How to Make a Living with Your Writing, third edition, if you want to check that out. I also intended to finish How to Write a Novel again. It's been on my goals for like three years now. I opened the Scrivener file, which has like 90,000 word draft in it. And I just couldn't, I just couldn't do it. Um, I definitely have some imposter syndrome around the topic. After all, Stephen King wrote a book on writing. So yeah, I always feel like, oh, I just, I just not, just can't do it. It's also a huge topic. So I need to pick an angle. But it certainly remains on the to write list and I'll probably put it back on the list again for next year. The surprise book of the year was, of course, The Relaxed Author, which I co-wrote with Mark Leslie Lefebvre. And we both did the audiobook narration, which I think turned out super well. It sprang out of an interview conversation on an episode of the show. And then we had so many comments saying that it was needed that we went ahead and wrote the book. We both had to clear our schedules to write it, but I'm so glad we did because lots of you have said it's been useful in a year when we all needed to relax more. And luckily, I finished it just before getting COVID. (laughs) And thankfully, my relaxed approach to writing and publishing meant that even though I didn't write and publish much this year, uh, I still have a business. So luckily, um, yeah, that went out and uh, you can listen to us talking about the process, what we learned about each other, which was fascinating in episode 575. In Foreign Rights, I self-published Your Author Business Plan in German and also licensed some more non-fiction books for authors in French. I also intended to double down on selling direct, which I've definitely achieved. There's more I could do, but I sell ebooks and audiobooks every single day from payhip.com forward slash the creative pen. So I get money in my bank account every single day from book sales, uh, which I really love because, of course, most of our payments go in once a month. So you get a good deal. I get money in my bank account immediately. And of course, you can go check that out on payhip.com forward slash the creative pen. I also have a tutorial that many of you have used to set up Selling Direct and I'm pleased that that's becoming more of a trend for indies and that's at thecreativepen.com forward slash sell direct tutorial. All the links in the show notes. Of course, there are extensive show notes from this show today. So the Creative Pen website. Well, in May 2021, Google updated their algorithm around page speed and some other technical metrics. So I implemented a new WordPress theme and some technical backend things on the creativepen.com. One of those tasks you just have to do sporadically with what is now a 13 year old website. (laughs) And I did get some help, but I do a lot of the technical stuff myself. So uh, that did take some time. You should now find it easier to search if you use the search bar on the start here page. If you go to thecreativepen.com, you'll find uh, hopefully things much easier. There are more landing pages and resource pages for the most common things that people need, like editing, book cover design, tools, etc. And it's a really important point because if you run an author business, which some of us do, your website and your email list are also assets just as much as your books. So I get offers for the creativepen.com, like people want to buy the domain and the traffic (laughs) and the email list. But of course, it's not for sale. This is the hub of everything I do online. It draw, it drives significant revenue. I would not have, I don't think I'd have a business without my website and my podcast. And importantly, I control it. So, well, I would have a business, but not the business I personally have. <laughs> so we have to maintain our backlist books, but we also have to maintain our backlist websites. So this was a business critical task that just had to be done. And I'm going to have to do uh, JF Pen in 2021 coming up. (laughs) 
the Creative Pen podcast. So it's been an epic year for this show with weekly episodes as usual, plus a lot of extra in between episodes and futurist episodes. So I've done 69 episodes in 2021 in total of The Creative Pen. Uh, And thanks to my corporate sponsors, to my patrons at patreon.com forward slash The Creative Pen for supporting the show, to everyone who has used Buy Me A Coffee to to buy me a coffee. You drink a lot of coffee. (laughs) This helps me financially, but also emotionally, particularly in this challenging year. I did a survey in the last couple of weeks and I'll share the way ahead for the podcast and the results of that uh, uh, next in the next show in my New Year Goals episode. We will hit episode uh, 600 soon and we will head towards episode 700 uh, over the next couple of years. So really quite interesting in terms of where I want to go with the podcast. The Creative Future. So one of my biggest goals for 2021 was to dive deeper into the technological changes that have accelerated due to the pandemic. I said in my 2020 roundup, quote, I've been bored for a while now with a feeling of stagnation in the status quo of the publishing industry, but I see things coming on the horizon that we need to prepare for, especially with the acceleration of digital transformation in the pandemic year. Now, to be honest, you know I appreciate change, (laughs) but things have moved much faster than even I expected. And in fact, much of what was considered futurist is now moving into the present. 2021 certainly ended with a lot more people knowing words like NFTs and metaverse. (laughs) You didn't expect that. I also intended 2021 to be a year of expansion, as I mentioned, creatively, uh, physically and mentally in terms of the things I learn about. And one out of three isn't bad, (laughs) as I definitely expanded my understanding of these technological areas. I joined new communities and I read a lot of books, listened to a lot of podcasts, and I've started to grasp how this could all look in the years to come. And I know there are so many different areas. They're all kind of coalescing into this future. So my futurist episodes included this, and I've linked, I've listed them all in the notes. Um, but I've done episodes on blockchain and NFTs, the metaverse, um, before. And my episode on the metaverse, I published in August 2021. And then, of course, in October, Facebook, Facebook rebranded as Meta with the focus on the metaverse. And suddenly it hit the news and has become a, a big deal. I've done episodes on co-writing with AI tools, uh, as well as digital narration with AI voices and uh, lots of other things. And you can find a roundup of all the episodes and a list of AI writing tools, my book and my course, The AI Assisted Author, at thecreativepen.com forward slash future. And I guess I should also recognise that I did create that course in just the month, I guess, before I left for New Zealand. It was really great to be able to round up everything that I've been learning and organize it into a course. I intended it to be a mini course, but it turned out a bit longer as I go into all these different areas of how AI is impacting the author life. And uh, often I do these things in order to organize my own thoughts. And I just loved delving deep into it. So all of those those of you who've taken the AI assisted author course, uh, I hope you've also found it useful. And it's got some actionable things for right now. But of course, it's mainly for uh, sort of understanding how everything fits together. So that's the AI assisted author. And you can find all my courses at thecreativepen.com forward slash learn. So I've also started putting these technological things into action in my creative work and business in 2021. I incorporated pseudo write into my writing process and used it in Tomb of Relics, mainly as a sort of extended thesaurus. And I now include a statement of AI usage in my author's note, mainly for transparency reasons in the future, as I believe a lot more people will start using AI tools. And I, I really think transparency is important. I've also worked with Orna Ross at the Alliance of Independent Authors around shaping a submission on AI and intellectual property to the World Intellectual Property Organization and the UK government, as well as contributing to the ally statement of practical and ethical guidelines around AI for writing. 
I did publish a book on the Ethereum blockchain through BookChain, although I haven't earned any ETH or any other cryptocurrency yet. That was one of my goals this year, but I suspect I will be earning crypto in some way in 2022. Everything this year was more about testing the process and trying things. And the marketplace for books on chain is likely to be NFTs in 2022. And then, of course, the bigger platforms may adopt architecture changes as Kickstarter is doing moving to blockchain. So I worked also with Deep Zen to create AI narrated editions of co-writing a book and also A Thousand Fiendish Angels, both of which are clearly marked as auto narrated and have a badge on the cover, again for transparency reasons. You can listen to samples at the end of episode 589 or on the audiobook pages on payhip.com forward slash the creative pen where I have a, a section for digital narration. I have indeed published more futurist episodes than I expected because of the acceleration of change this year. While many of you appreciate these episodes and have found them interesting and useful, others didn't find them so palatable. (laughs) In fact, I've received more hate and negativity through emails, comments and social media in the last few months than I've received in my entire author career over the futurist topics. There was even a moment when I thought I might separate out the futurist stuff into a private paid podcast and website community and never ever mention it again here. (laughs) But my wonderful patrons and a few strategic chats with uh, uh, author friends who talked me off the ledge... (laughs) you all help me see that the information is worthwhile and important to keep sharing uh, on this show. So change is hard, but it's also inevitable. I started sharing my journey here in 2008 in the early days of ebooks, print on demand, later digital audio, streaming, and then all the other things I've been talking about. So technology will keep changing and will bring us more opportunity and inevitably more challenge. I'll keep sharing what I learn and you can expect more futurist episodes and application of the technology in 2022. So I'm not stopping. (laughs) More of that in my new year goals. I also think that a lot of the uh, negativity and problems that people have had is not about me. I realise it's not about me. It's not about these topics. It's about the fact that life is blooming difficult. (laughs) and that we it's difficult to just deal with the status quo let alone thinking about the future I completely understand it but I'm going to carry on sharing new stuff so JF Penn thrillers dark fantasy crime and horror so I have found it incredibly hard to write fiction this year so it's not been a stellar year for JF Penn (laughs) I have journaled a lot, like I've written a lot of words in my journals, uh, but that is not for publication, at least not right now. In terms of new fiction, I wrote Tomb of Relics. The previous working title was Day of the Martyr, but turned into Tomb of Relics. (laughs) If you read it, you'll understand. It was a hard won book and it turned out as a novella, not a full length novel. I had attended it I intended it as full length, but it just just wasn't happening, look, to be honest. Uh, I'm usually inspired to write by my travels, uh, which clearly didn't happen. And my conversation with Becca Syme in episode 572 on strengths helped me understand why travel is so important for me and my creative process. And look, to be honest, we have to do what we do and uh, embrace how we work. Um, so that's life. I did write one new short story, which I will be publishing in January. It's called Blood, Sweat and Flame. And I edited and published a story I've been sitting on for a few years. It never quite seemed the right time to publish it, but this year it felt exactly right. That is A Midwinter Sacrifice and uh, it is out now. It is a short story and it is not a happy Christmas (laughs) It is called A Midwinter Sacrifice. It has blood on the cover. So yes, um, you can expect what that is. But look, being an indie author is not just about producing new work. It's also about making the most of your intellectual property assets and being a good publisher. So this year I added hardcovers through KDP Print as well as Ingram Spark. So I do 
Uh, all my print books are sort of double, doubled up on KDP Print and Ingram. I also published the Map Walker trilogy in all the formats and Tree of Life in audiobook. I also pulled the first three arcane thrillers out of ACX exclusivity and took them wide. Plus, I engaged Michael Brent Collings to help with my fiction book descriptions after his fantastic interview in episode 591. And I'm in the middle of updating all of that through the publishing ecosystem at the moment. But I, when I talked to Michael Brent, and of course, you've probably listened to that show, it made me just go, do you know what? He is really blooming good at this. And so uh, I engaged him to help me with my backlist. And so that is going to be my sort of focus on updating backlist um, for 2022. More of that in my new year update. So books and travel. So my books and travel podcast is now at 76 episodes. And this year I found solace in virtual escape and dreams of travel. And the interview definitely provided that. And from the comments and emails, my listeners found that too. It is a podcast of love and still doesn't bring me any direct income because I haven't written the travel books I intended to, but it has brought me happiness. I'm also using the booksandtravel.page website as a blog to share articles and pictures from places I do travel. So you, for example, you can read and watch or look at the pictures from the St. Cuthbert's Way walk, even though I haven't podcasted on it or written the book. (laughs) You can... um, listen to the show and it includes sort of some episodes are about different places some are musings on the deeper side of travel and just search for books and travel podcast on your favorite podcast app or check out the backlist at booksandtravel.page forward slash listen so then i had a section on health travel and walking and of course in my goals i said i was expecting the pandemic year to sort of end in march 2021 and that i'll be back in the world i said i'm planning trips to portugal and japan as well as doing some ultra marathons. Uh, I did intend a walking pilgrimage in the north of England. So I didn't do Portugal, didn't do Japan. I didn't do any ultra marathons, uh, but I did walk. <laughs> um, so yeah, not really as expected in terms of all these things. My health, my travel, and really my walking was not really as expected. But we made the most of being in the UK. And I tried to treat the UK as a holiday destination more than ever. So we did cycle from Oxford to Bath through the Cotswolds. And again, there are pictures of all of this on booksandtravel.page, links in the notes. We walked along part of the Jurassic Coast uh, near Lyme Regis. We walked in Puzzle Wood, which is part of the ancient forest of Dean that inspired Tolkien's uh, Fangor. And I walked the St Cuthbert's Way as a solo from the borders of Scotland across Northumberland to Lindisfarne, Holy Island. And that was definitely incredible. And I really want to get that written up as a travel book next year. Also, as I've said, I'm recording this in Auckland, but uh, this is not a holiday. It's definitely not a holiday. <laughs> I'm going to need a holiday when I get back, to be honest. But this is a family trip um, and it has been, as I said, very stressful uh, with a double dose of bureaucratic hell and quarantine difficulties and uh, all the fun of the fair. Since my mother-in-law is immunocompromised, we can't do much while we're here either. But it is warm and there is sea and bush to walk beside and different birds and fish and things. So pictures on Instagram and Facebook at JF Penn Author if you'd like to see some blue sky guy from Auckland. Then in terms of financial goals, my main financial goal for the year was to sustain the creative pen income, uh, keeping it steady while at the same time freeing up time to write the books I want to write, which didn't really happen, and time to play with the new technologies and do all those extra shows that I have ended up doing. So while it's still a very good living and I am grateful for having a backlist and a website and a lot of affiliate income and a lot of uh, money does now come in automatically from just having a website um, going and the podcast out there and the books out there and uh, I have outsourced some um, ads for nonfiction this last year. So a lot of it is kind of automated but uh, my revenue did drop and that is definitely related to how much work I didn't do <laughs> I have stopped doing I've stopped doing a lot of things so I've stopped doing webinars I've stopped doing most advertising I've pulled back on doing a ton of stuff and I didn't write many books I spent 
time on things that don't bring in immediate revenue, but should add revenue streams in the future. I said no to a lot of things um, in terms of both mental health and physical health reasons, but also it just wasn't interesting to me. So while I want to continue with the experimentation in 2022, I do want to lift my income again. So more on that in my 2022 goals. Right, that's about it for 2021. And I don't want to wish the time away, but I am glad the year is over. I hope that you can look back and celebrate what you've achieved, even that, (laughs) even if it's just making it through alive. And writing also remains for all of us a haven for our thoughts and solace and therapy and all those things. And that's why I've written a lot in my journal this year. It's not just about words for publication. It's about writing terrible poetry or good poetry and writing how much we are so angry and all the things. I mean, my journals are just full of anger this year and misery and all those things. And writing is just a solace, creatives. It doesn't have to be for publication. So I hope you have some time to step back at this time of year to think and write about the year that is almost over. And I'm grateful for all of you. I'm thankful for your support, both for buying my books and clicking my links and buying through my affiliate stuff and supporting me on the podcast and all the things that enable me to continue this creative life. Thank you so much. If you'd like to share your thoughts, please do leave a comment or blog about this and tweet me the link or just tweet me at the creative pen. So um, thank you again. And I'll be back soon with my plans and goals for 2022. In the meantime, happy writing and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening today. I hope you found it helpful. You might also like the backlist episodes and show notes available at thecreativepen.com forward slash podcast. You can also get your free author blueprint at thecreativepen.com forward slash blueprint. If you'd like to connect, you can tweet me at The Creative Pen or find me on Facebook at The Creative Pen. See you next time.